awesome. We got a treat for you guys today, so make sure that you tune in. We'll give you guys at least another minute to go ahead and jump on the show. Other than that, man, Stan, you can take it away right now. You can do what you do best, oh, brother. Great to be here, y'all. Welcome to Game Beyond the Game Presents Talk That Talk, which once upon a time is a 21-day challenge as we discuss transition with elite athletes from all over the country, different sports and realms. But now it has morphed to a little bit more, so we give you a little bit taste, a little bit more of a taste of transition and game beyond the game of talk that talk my name is sam pearson second i'm your host and i'm joined obviously by the founder of game beyond the game prince daniels jr so man how are you feeling today man bless as always man every day above ground is a beautiful day you know? it's a so, beautiful day indeed. right so yeah man i'm just I'm, I'm honored to be here with another um incredible athlete man share their inspiring story and some of the things that they're doing in the community and in the world you know to make an impact uh, with all the uncertainty that's going on. So, um, as always, I'm blessed. Super cool. And as we always do, we're spoiling our fans and people who watch these interviews with another incredible guest. I would like to welcome you all to introduce and get to know Joe Gamble, who is a native of Baltimore City and an active philanthropist in the area. He's a former t NFL tight end for the Philadelphia Eagles, Cleveland Browns, and the Tennessee Titans. Joel has over seven years of experience in business development, community relations, public speaking, program management and implementation, as well as youth development. He is the founder of the Joel Gamble Foundation, a nonprofit organization whose mission is to promote personal excellence and community commitment among inner city youth. Joel has been a special education teacher in the Baltimore County School System for seven years now. That, that's amazing, bro. And not only is he actively involved and passionate in youth education, but he continues to use his extensive sports and physical training background by empowering and creating programs centered around strength and conditioning clinics and sports camps for you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome everybody. You Clap your hands and step hey. your feet. It's Joel Gamble. <laughs> What's going on, fellas? That boy What's good. Hey, JG. What's good, big dog? What's up, man? Thanks for having me. It's a blessing to be here. I really appreciate you guys taking the time out and having me on today. Oh, man. It's, it's, yeah. it's an honor. <laughs> Certainly great to have you here with the great energy. And we're all head we're headphone bros. So right, right, right. If you don't have your headphones, just be jealous. Right. That's all you're you real do, professional right, right now. We, <laughs> we're real you know, we're you locked in. Put, you about to put us on verses and have us doing <laughs> DJ battles yeah. out this piece. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for sure, man. Thanks for being here. Good vibes only. So let's hop right into it. Obviously, you know, you've become a th philanthropist, and maybe that was always a piece of you, but Tell me, where did that come from? Why is it important to uplift the community? And what is it that struck you to want to do that and be that change? Man, it's wild, um, you know, coming from Baltimore, West Baltimore to be exact. Um, I never really had any NFL, NBA, or any celebrities come into the inner city and instill any uh, hope, any values. Uh, you know, I never had anybody come back and talk to me and give me that hope that, you know, we could, we could make it in those, uh, in those positions. And so once I was uh, blessed with the opportunity to be successful, I decided that I wanted to actually be that person that people can touch, people can talk to, people can be around. And, you know, the community can have that hope that someone that comes from the same neighborhoods as them can actually make it and be successful and come back and not only just be successful and, and move on, but come back and give back and, and, and be, you know, boots to the ground, so to speak, as far as like in the community. And so that's very special to me. Um, uh, you know, I wasn't always, uh, you know, the, the mindset wasn't always there. I can, you know, I can say uh, it took a lot, you know, especially once I, you know, I got out in the NFL, um, you know, I was kind of, you know, it, it took a lot. You know, I had to get myself mentally prepared uh, after, you know, not being in the NFL in 2011 after the lockout. And so, um, you know, God blessed me with the platform of the NFL to be able to reach uh, people and be able to uh, bless and give back to people. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's just my duty um, to, you know, do all that I can to help people become successful. Now, if you don't mind, you know, just briefly, what was that transition like for you? You know, going from being, obviously, you accomplished so much in the NFL and then no longer in the NFL. What was that transition like? Were there ups, downs, and if so, you know, feel free to dive right into it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, 
you know, I'll start with getting there first. It took me five years to get to the NFL. I wasn't drafted out of college and getting there was, it was amazing. Once I got there, um, just the love that you receive from your teammates, from people, from the community, um, and just being there with guys, you know, I remember in 2009, my first team was the Philadelphia Eagles and being in the locker room with guys like Michael Vick, who I played the video game with, you know, in 04, when he's on the front of the Madden cover. I mean, that was just, you know, it's, it's, it was just amazing to play with uh, Mike Vick, Donovan McNabb, Deshaun West, uh, Deshaun Jackson, Brian Westbrook, LaShawn McCoy, you know, uh, play for Andy oh. Reid. You know, that squad was, you know, ridiculous. And so um, that was my first NFL experience. Uh, and it was, you know, definitely a, a wonderful experience. And so, you know, um, the NFL career that I had, you know, I was blessed to play for three teams. Um, and when the lockout came, it was hard for me to get back in as a free agent uh, on to another squad. Um, it took me about two years, I would say, to kind of readjust to, you know, life without the NFL uh, life with a nine to five job and then, you know, life without football, the game that I was playing for so many years. Um, and so it was tough. I would say it was tough. Uh, I was depressed. I went through a lot. And, you know, at one point in time, I said, I didn't want to help anybody because, um, you know, this game that I love was taken away from me. You know, I questioned, you know, why is, why did God take this away from me? I was doing everything that I was supposed to do. Um, you know, but then, you know, I, I, you know, hey, you know, God always has his plans for us. And, you know, we may we may think different, but he has a whole another uh, set of a set of plans for us. And so um, I'm here, you know, um, and in 2020 now and I've helped probably over 8000 kids in Baltimore and beyond. So um, Yo. you know, me, me saying that I wasn't going to help nobody, you know, <laughs> I refuse to right. do it. I, re I refuse. God, I'm not going to do it. He's like, yeah, all right. You know, 8,000 kids like, later. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's, it's been a blessing. Like I said, he, he, you know, he gave me that platform that I had and I'm able to reach more people. And, you know, I hang my hat on being able to touch lives. Uh, even more than some of the NFL veterans, uh, you know, that's played in the league for 10, 12, 15 years. And so uh, it's such a blessing to be able to help people out. That's awesome. Hey, thank you. Please, um, Chris, I'm sorry. So when, when, when you say that you had an opportunity to help out all of these individuals, these, these, the youth, um, what advice do you give them um, from trans, talking about transition? And also what advice do you give them with someone that, could possibly be in your shoes and, and is looking to make it to the NFL and has never had a celebrity um, come and reach out to them and say anything, but your presence, it's there. So how do you capitalize on that moment? Absolutely. So I remember my first camp, my first football camp in West Baltimore, uh, mm -hmm. right in the area where uh, the Freddie Gray situation occurred in uh, Sandtown, Winchester, mm -hmm. uh, Easterwood, uh, in that area. I, I do a lot of my... Um, community service in that in that area of West Baltimore and so I uh, at Easterwood Recreation Center we ha had my first football camp and what I said to the kids was um, you got to make sure that uh, whatever dreams that you have uh, whatever dreams whatever goals that you have you got to make sure that you achieve those goals uh, one and then you put 110 percent effort into those goals and then the most important thing that I said was never let anybody uh, deter you uh, or take you, steer you off your path to reaching those goals. And so along the way, there's going to be trials, tribulations, uh, pitfalls all over the place. You're not going to get to a level of the NFL or, or becoming an actor or an actress or, you know, even a lawyer or a doctor. You're not going to get to that point without having some type of uh, obstacles along the way. And so uh, what you need to understand is you need to continue to keep pushing, um, continue to stay uh, disciplined, uh, have perseverance and determination. I was stubborn. And so whenever people would say that I wasn't going to make it to the league, you know, I just looked at them like, hey, all right, you know, we, I'm going to get there and I'm going to prove you wrong. And so I kind of instill that value into the kids that I talk to about uh, not letting anybody, whether it be your family, your friends, like 
because with, you know, people got to understand if it's your dream, nobody else is even going to understand what's for you. It, it, it's your dream. And so, you know, your mom, your dad, your cousin, your uncle, your aunt, whoever it may be, your grandma, you know, they might not understand. That doesn't mean they don't love you. That just means that it's not their dream. They don't understand what you're going through as far as what God has for you. And so you got to understand that. And then also not let anybody discourage you and then continue to push and give it your all and be hungry. Like Eric Thomas said, the uh, hip hop pre uh, preacher, he said, you got to want it as much as you want to breathe. And that's what I remember when I was trying to make it to the NFL. I wanted it that much where, you know, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to make it to the NFL just as much as I wanted to breathe. Mm amazing thanks for sharing that big time <laughs> and, and i want to pick a little bit off you know from you know prince's question you know early on are they, and you mentioned you know struggles and trials and tribulations and so forth what's something that you think that the average person would misunderstand about let's say you being a professional football player or having to deal with that transition man you're in the league please it, it was easy <laughs> what is something that the average person would not even think about that maybe you either had to work through or work for to get where you are today? A lot of people don't know the business side of things when it comes to NFL. I think more so today, people are starting to learn uh, more so about what it takes as far as the business side and not all of the best players are on the field um, and the investment <laughs> that teams put into players. So for instance, um, not a lot of people know that if a player gets drafted and they're given a million dollar or a couple million dollar contract, that team has to get something out of that investment. So if you come along and you're a player that's receiving less money, you might get released or you might get cut just off the strength that they already invested a couple million in this guy. Now they may bring you back. They may put you on a practice squad, um, you know, things of that nature, but, it's not always the, the best player on the field at all times. Um, and then also a lot of coaches don't have, um, don't have the opportunity to choose the players that they want on the field. And so, um, or, you know, on their team. And so some of the times you'll see that general managers and player personnel directors, um, they will make moves and the coaches don't even know the moves that are being made. And so, um, so these are some of the things kind of behind the scenes that, you know, not a lot of people know about. And, you know, it's, it's definitely a stressful situation where uh, you're, you're, you know, your agent is telling you that, um, that he just talked to a coach and the coach is saying that, you know, the great job that you're doing. And then all of a sudden you get a, you get called into, you know, uh, the office and they talking about, you know, treating you or releasing you or cutting you. And it's like, what? It's like, what? So many big signals. Like, what is going on? I just All talked right. to, you know, such and such. So, um, yeah. you know, those are some of the things that the public might not know about that um, as players we go through um, and it's stressful. Um, I was, you know, I, I was lucky enough not to have a family that I had to uh, uproot each time that um, I moved on to different teams at that time. Uh, and oh. so, you know, I, you know, I, I couldn't even imagine, um, you know, having, you know, my family and moving, moving from city to city with, you know, kids and things like that. It's tough. Man, you know, thanks for that insight. You know, real I, quick, Prince. Oh, go yeah. ahead, man. How, how, how did you, how did you maintain your level of focus with all of those changes that were going on? And then um, how is it that when these players, they have families, I know, and I know you don't have you didn't have one at the time, but how is it that they maintain this focus? And what type of advice would you give these younger athletes? You know, like do you tell them don't have a family <laughs> while you're playing? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so you can maintain I mean, your focus, or you know, do you? Do you I mean, that's 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 tough, man. I mean, you know, <laughs> especially okay. if they're young and have a family right now. Yeah, <laughs> right, 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 right. I mean, you know, it it, it goes back to the the hundred and ten percent piece that I tell young kids. Like, mm -hmm. you know, um, I've seen at least along my NFL journey, I've seen so many guys that wanted to make it to the NFL and just didn't last along that journey, along that way. 
And so uh, just having that grit, that determination, that, you know, perseverance, that's what you really have to have. Because like I said, those obstacles, like even when you get up there to that level, like you're going to have some boulder of obstacles that you got to, you know, go around. And so um, even when I, you know, got my first trial with the, uh, with the Eagles, I didn't get signed right away. And so I got sent home. They signed another guy from BYU. I was from Shippensburg University, and so it was a smaller school. He was taller. He was 6'4". I'm 6'2", at tight end position. Uh, so I had some things stacked against me uh, as far as the NFL was concerned and, you know, what they look at. And so uh, they signed him, and then a month later, they calling me back, and they signed me. And so, um, you know, you just have to have that grit, that perseverance, and that, you know, that just nasty hunger that, you know, I'm going to get it. I'm going to be that guy. Uh, and I think that a lot of guys, when they get to that, at least when they get to that uh, level, most of us do have, you know, what is called as, as far as like that determination. Because you don't really get to that level um, unless you got some type of, you know, work ethic, some type of determination, because uh, everybody's talented at that level. Super great. Where would you say you got that confidence from? Because clearly I think, that you know, to get to that level, like you said, to be elite, it comes a certain level of confidence that you have to, let's say, live with and actually kind of becomes a part of you, right? Yeah. Where'd you get your confidence from? Like, honestly, I don't know, brother. Like, I talk to people all the time. Like, what is it? What makes pe special people special? I believe that there's, mm. you know, special people out here that, you know, that given the circumstances that they come from, you know, I know plenty of guys from West Baltimore that um, that aren't in the same situation that, that I'm in uh, currently and, and might have had, you know, more talent uh, at the time. And so, um, you know, I don't know what it is that um, that determines whether somebody has that perseverance, that determination or they can, you know, that stick to it um, or what makes people special to the point where they can overcome certain circumstances that some people can't and you know I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure um, that if I had you know that that I would probably bottle it up and I would sell that thing you know for $99.99 <laughs> I'd be selling bottles of determination and, and perseverance and, and, spe and specialness and I just you know I'd be a millionaire off of that, but I don't, I don't know what it is because you could have two kids in the same household or you could have four kids in the same household that not everybody is successful, but there's this one kid out of the same four kids that, you know, that becomes the president of the United States or something. And so, like, I just don't know what it is that, you know, so I can't really answer that as far as, like, what it is that makes people special. Um, to the point where I guess it's just God, man. God has, you know, his plans for our lives. And, um, you know, I do believe there's special people out there that, you know, are, you know, here for, for everybody has a purpose. And so, um, you know, okay. you I mean, you're it, one of those special people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Exactly. Um, no. So, uh, go ahead, Stan. No, no, no. no okay. Just... All right. All right. All right. So, like my last question, um, well, not exactly, but. What do you consider your ultimate achievement in your life and, um, uh, you know, that you're most proud of? Wow. Wow. I mean, you know, the, the NFL is one <laughs> because, you know, coming from small schools, coming from West Baltimore, uh, you know, that one, 1. 1.5 or 1.2 percent that actually um, get a chance to actually make it to the NFL. That's a big achievement that I would say. Mm -hmm. And then another is, you know, um, you know, uh, obviously accepting God into my life as my personal savior. That's another thing that I look at as, you know, what steers me in the correct path. Um, and then uh, being able to give back, you know, um, I know I talk about that, you know, and I'll say it a lot, but, you know, it's really been a blessing um, to be able to give back to other people. And that, you know, um, you know, when you see that and you see the faces on, especially kids' faces when, you know, you're doing for them and they're excited and they're looking forward to that next event or that next season or that next, um, you know, whatever it is that, you know, you're hosting. Um, you know, that's what kind of keeps me going on as far as like my philanthropy and, and giving is, you know, I love the kids, man. Um, <laughs> 
and I know that you know I, I know that my mom uh, didn't have money you know to 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 send me to football camps and send me to you know different things and so um, what I try to do is try to make everything free for kids um, as much as possible uh, but still having you know kids work for uh, certain things certain incentives so I'm not always handing out things you know for free and all of that you might have to do some work to earn it you know um, but but you're going to get it you know and I'm not going to be asking any money for it yeah. Beautiful. Man, amazing. So, you know, really quick, so you seem to be pretty insightful. You know, you've learned quite a bit and you're giving so much of what you've learned, you know, throughout your life to the younger generation. But what if you're the younger generation? What advice do you think you'd give the younger you <laughs> as you look back on, I don't know, teenage you, middle school you, you know, what advice would you give that Joe again? Man, um, I guess I would say stay, get focused. Um, Get focused earlier, maybe. Um, I was always different, man. You know, I'm not even going to sit here and say that, you know, I was, uh, I kind of got off task in middle school. My parents separated and, you know, I had some, had some anger built up from and frustration from that. And so I kind of fell off task with that piece. Um, but once I got to high school, I got back on track and, um, you know, I was pretty much uh, you know, what I would say is, I, I, I'll tell you what I would, what advice I would do is, um, you know, try to give myself the, some college advice, some college advice as far as like what, well, you know, um, what to do when I get to college or how to prepare for college or, you know, because that transition from um, Baltimore public schools to, um, to, you know, to college was different. <laughs> that was a different animal right there, man. So, um, you know, I would try to give myself advice on how to prepare for that because I wasn't ready to write no papers. <laughs> I, I made myself ready, but that's that special part right there, man. I don't know how I did it, but, but I was right. I was right. That boy was writing. <laughs> Super cool. So you would definitely prepare your the college you, the, the yeah. senior in high school you for college and beyond. Yeah, man. That's great advice, especially for the young folks that may come across this or the parents of elite athletes who come across this. Prepare them. It's quite honest. You know, they may, you might think that they've been doing a lot of papers. Maybe they ain't been doing no papers. So yeah, they, <laughs> I was doing papers. I was doing papers, but I wasn't doing college papers. Like, it just, right. was, it, it, it just wasn't the same. And then on top of that, like, I wasn't working out how you work out in college. Like, I didn't touch the weights until I got to college. And so um, I was just going off a of natural talent, natural ability on the field, on the basketball court and in the classroom. And so, um, yeah, you know, start them young as far as like, you know, working on that craft, whether it be, you know, in the classroom, uh, on the field, on the court, wherever, whatever you do, start them young with working on that craft and developing that abilities, those abilities early. Nice. Awesome, man. Prince. So what led you to um, your passion of teaching to not only to become a teacher, but a special education teacher? <laughs> so I actually worked, um, I pretty much worked with kids all my life, uh, to okay. be honest. So out of college, I actually worked in a, um, in a prison system, uh, working in ju with juveniles. Uh, and then I went from that to um, playing in the NFL. Uh, and then after the NFL, I went straight, straight back into working in residential treatment facilities. So I work with uh, students with uh, disabilities, um, you know, mental issues, things of that nature, mental health field. And so, um, you know, then I went into the school system and that was what, eight years ago now. Um, and I still worked in the behavior specialist field of uh, helping students in the special education department, helping students with behavior um, and working on IEPs and uh, providing uh, those tools and, um, and things that kids need to become successful in the classroom. Uh, and this year was my first year teaching college and career readiness. Uh, this was my first year in high school. Um, so, it, you know, it was a different transition, but I was prepared for it because I've been working with kids with, and with my foundation now for eight years as well. Um, so, I, you know, I've been working with kids from different age levels for, you know, for the longest, even before I got a chance to teach in high school. So, um, you know, I, I, I had experience already with different 
uh, age groups of kids with my programs, whether it be mentoring, uh, sports leagues, college tours, all of those, uh, all of those engagements and interactions with youth helped me uh, become a, the teacher that I am today. Mm, mm, mm. Man, you, you mentioned your foundation. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Like absolutely, absolutely. So uh, the Joel Gamble Foundation, what we do is work with youth. Uh, we give resources. Our big thing is uh, providing opportunities and resources for youth to become successful, uh, whatever they may look like, uh, whether it be college tours for kids that want to go to college, uh, whether it be sports leagues for free, providing that uh, activity that kids need to play in the inner city, um, providing uh, free tutoring, uh, free uh, just different programs, literacy programs, helping kids become successful in whatever way that possible that we can. Uh, that's what we do. And so we have a wide range of programs, whether it be health and wellness programs uh, in, in conjunction and collaboration with uh, LifeBridge Health and and other health uh, community uh, uh, initiatives and companies. And then uh, working, you know, working with the city just to, you know, try to provide resources and opportunities for kids to be successful is a big thing that we do. And we've been doing that now for eight years. That's awesome, man. Yeah. So um, I, I know you, you mentioned just a little bit of it, but what, what's on the horizon for your foundation? Like, um, oh. Yeah, oh, yeah, what's on the, yeah, what's on the horizon? <laughs> oh, we got plenty. Right now, uh, you know, obviously, in the situation with COVID-19, currently, uh, we decided, since we couldn't do our flag football league and our summer football camp, um, you know, obviously, for, uh, for health reasons, liability, we didn't want kids to get together. And, you know, as much as we want to see the kids out on the field, and I want to see everybody juking and putting those uh, <laughs> Prince Daniel moves out there, you know, on the field. Um, you know, we just didn't want the kids to get out there and, and get sick or anything like that and see something happen. And so uh, we decided to actually move forward with a virtual program. Mm. And so what we provide now is a virtual skills and drills program where NFL friends of mine actually come on every Saturday on our Zoom link and they actually interact. They teach kids the technique of their position, their position specifics. Uh, and then they talk about their journey to the NFL and their experience while they were there. And then we have like a question and answer session. And also before we, uh, I, I introduce our NFL guests, usually I do a home workout with the kids. And so it gets them active and, uh, and you know, keeps them healthy as well as uh, helping them to learn some of the position specific uh, basics of uh, different positions. So I've had um, 11 NFL uh, players and coaches to come on to the program. And so that's been a blessing. Wow, man, this is powerful. Yeah. This is <laughs> truly powerful, man. This is one of the things that I've been brainstorming for some time on like ways more athletes can return to their communities and, and uplift oh, yeah you know, the, the, the community, the culture, oh, yeah. um, and brain resources. The uh, presence, the presence alone, man, you know, when you talk about boots to the ground, um, you know, I'm talking about more than just giving away turkeys on Thanksgiving. Like when mm -hmm. people can actually see you uh, in the communities, like all, you know, all we have to do as athletes is just be there for people in the communities, whether, you know, where, wherever we're at, if you're in Florida, if you're in Texas, you know, there's hoods everywhere. Um, there's, you know, um, you know, people that need opportunities and resources everywhere. So uh, we all can do our part as far as, you know, um, providing those that help and those resources that people need. And I'm not talking about giving money to, you know, um, all the time either. I'm just talking about that presence and the knowledge of how to become successful that we have. Uh, we can use that to our, you know, our advantage. Beautiful. And thanks for sharing that. And as I know, we kind of near closing it out and so forth. How can people find and learn more about you? How can people support your foundation? Because obviously a lot of folks that spend time and learning more about their game beyond the game, they certainly want to pour into different resources. So how can we learn more about you? How can we support your foundation, your upcoming projects? Absolutely. So my Instagram is uh, Joel underscore Gamble. Uh, so that's J-O-E-L underscore G-A-M-B-L-E. 
my foundation, we have our website. You could type in Google the Joel Gamble Foundation and everything that we have will pop up. Um, whether it be our Facebook page or our website, you could go on our website, uh, contact us if you want to volunteer, if you want to donate, you could click the donate button, uh, whatever you want to do. Right now, we're giving away computers, uh, Chromebook computers to youth in the inner city um, because obviously when, once COVID-19 hit, um, we had to do the virtual learning within the school system. You know, since I'm a, a special education teacher, I, I noticed and I noticed also that a lot of my kids in a special education field, um, you know, weren't present. And so, you know, a lot of that has to do with, you know, they might not have computers, they might not have internet, they might not have, you know, just that access to technology that we all, um, that's, you know, become more so not more so is changing from a luxury now to a necessity. And so uh, what we're doing now is trying to give out uh, computers in Baltimore City to youth that uh, if they type up an essay, not, in, not, not so much as type up, but if they write an essay, if they, you know, uh, shoot us an email, anything that they could do to get us, you know, what their need um, for the computers, then we'll deliver it to their high school and present it to them personally. Now, we've been doing that now. We've delivered 10 Chromebook computers. Uh, we've, uh, we've given out 70 uh, tablets to youth in the city. And so we're going to continue to keep going. So if people hey. want to donate, like I said, the Joe Gamble Foundation .org, um, If you want to send us a Chromebook yourself, you could do that. It doesn't have to be money. Um, and you'll see us posting pretty much every week of, you know, the donations that we're giving the kids. And so, you know, that'll be, that'll be a blessing too. <laughs> Man, Joel, I'm going oh. to be, on, be honest, Joel. You're really underachieving in these shoots, okay? <laughs> you really should do more. No, I'm kidding. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, do more to be more. <laughs> Knocking everything over. <laughs> I'm not that's taking, what, that's you what you get. That's what you get. <laughs> God, God literally is like, oh, oh don't oh, like oh, ugly. Really? He don't, no, I don't, he don't. Like, I'm okay. trying to prove him wrong, but he does not. He's like, oh, you got jokes? So I got right. one too. <laughs> Splash with all your right. stuff. No, man. What I really am saying is, that, I mean, it's so inspirational because uh, a lot of folks, uh, the, the notion of understanding, like, be what you want to see, create what you'd like to see. So sometimes there are these places, person, and things that we would like to exist, but we understand that we have the power to create the very thing that you'd like to see. So I, I appreciate you creating the very things that you would like to see and then planting that seed in other folks so they can see it for themselves and begin to create also. Uh, Prince, any, it, no, my pleasure, man. Thank you. God, I was only joking. That's number one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Prince, any final thoughts or final words? Man? Um, yes, final thoughts. I usually have, I have a question that I ask at the end. Um, you know, Joel, we, we, we're living in a, in, a, in a world that's like forever changing right now. And there's so many uncertainties going on, and I don't wish this upon anyone. But if uh, if you had to give some advice to your wife, to your child, uh, what what would that advice be? If it was your last advice that you can give to them, uh, I would say just let God um, let God you know guide your steps, hmm. um, whatever that may be. You know. Um, you know, there's been plenty of times where I had, like I said, I had my own plans for my life. And then, you know, God has stepped in and he's been a blessing for me. Um, and so, you know, just having him guide my steps and, and being that light unto, unto the world um, that others can see, you know, the, the passion that I have. Um, and that's kind of, that's kept me safe. Uh, whether, you know, whether I'm in a city and seeing, you know, um, shootouts occur right in front of me. Um, you know, I've, I've been blessed not to ever be shot, um, not to ever, you know, have to deal, deal with some of the violence that I grew up, um, you know, just witnessing and seeing, man, so much trauma that, you know, I've experienced in my lifetime. Um, but God has shielded me through all of that. And so I would say just, you know, uh, uh, you know, allow God to, you know, uh, guide your steps and you'll be all right. Oh, man. Thank you for those words, man. Continue to be safe and continue to be the version of you that many of us aspire to be. Truly, truly appreciate it. Absolutely. Any uh, other final? Uh, please. I got a. I got a final thought. How about please. Cam Newton? I want to see Cam <laughs> Newton go all the way. <laughs> 
I want to see him go all the way to the Super Bowl with the Patriots. I'm not even a Patriots fan. But. <laughs> if there was one thing the Patriots could have done to make me a fan, they they, they did. I can't yes. stand the city. I can't right. stand the team. And then they got Cam. I said, you know what? Y'all going to do that, huh? Y'all want- <laughs> Y'all want all the fans. Y'all got y'all black, want all the smoke. Uh, yeah. Look, Black Lives Matter, huh? Yeah, hey, that's what it is. <laughs> Bill Belichick was like, Black Lives Matter, we need Cam, baby. Gotcha. God, <laughs> now yeah. they could just get that boy some more money, but he don't get what's his for sure. I know. Because he I deserves know. Godly Patriots. Every time I this make, makes me dislike them, but still have to check. Yeah, I, I love their front office, man. They done picked up Josh Gordon. I love Josh Gordon. I, I wish they, you know, um, you know, he was, at, I, I felt at one point that he was going to be the best receiver in the league. He's got that much of talent. And when they picked him up, I was like, oh, this is for sure. But, you know, he's, he's been fighting his battles. Um, and so, so, you know, seeing Cam, you know, they pick up everybody, man. They, they picked up Chad Johnson back in the day. Like, <laughs> they picked up AB. Randy Moss, Randy Moss, everybody, man. And A.B., like you said, they, he yeah. did for a hot second. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, a hot second. <laughs> a hot, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Ah, yeah. That, that's a great final thought, man. Thank you for being <laughs> <laughs> Let's go camp. Ah, but speaking uh, of, what do y'all think AB is going to uh, land, man? Do you think he's going to get another opportunity or what? I, I like to think he, well, you know, he's had, it seems like he's kind of been underground for a little bit. So I think someone is going to take a shot at him, you know, especially because he's taking some time to cool off in some way, shape, or form. You know, it, it'd be nice, you know, to see him get another opportunity. What do you think, Prince? From a political standpoint, I don't think they're going to give him another chance because he has some other stuff pending. Mm-hmm. And, and so he's not on, on anybody's uh, favorite list. So I don't see, you know, the NFL vouching for him uh, to, to, to be a part of a part of the NFL, you know? Right, and right. so uh, I hate to see it because he's like one of the best players and he has a lot of pride to try to go and play for uh, an arena football team or the Canadian football team or, or European football team. So um, it's, it's going to be a real finicky situation just because he doesn't have anybody backing him and everybody just kind of turned their back, back on him. And, uh, you know, the NFL is just like, hey, man, nobody's digging the NFL, baby. Right, right, <laughs> I don't care right. who you are. Right. <laughs> Speak, yeah. Speaking of turning the back on, you know, do you guys think that Cam – uh, not Cam. Uh, Kaepernick is going to get an opportunity this year. No, I, and I, I'm sorry to say it like that, but no. And and to be totally honest, I love Kaepernick, but I don't think he should put himself in that position to um, uh, for people to be able to ridicule him. So you know he can be his now his his self image will be more. You know he's a failure, or they gave him a chance because mm-hmm. no matter how you turn it. He's still going to be ostracized um, yeah. for yeah. for what, whatever reason, and right. so um, you know, no, no matter how much how much enlightenment and knowledge that he has brought to everyone, they still like, okay, that's your thing. This is our thing, and mm. look, look, that's your thing, and this is our thing. <laughs> and so you know, it, it's it's I don't I don't I don't think he's going to get another opportunity. And also, I don't think that he should actually um, uh, try to participate. I think he has his lane. I think he needs to stay in his lane and help the players that need the help more than anything. Mm. Uh, you know, because now it becomes a political battle. And so it's, that's just a whole, that's just a lot of yeah. mumbo I, jumbo. I, yeah, yeah. I, I go back and, yeah, I go back and forth with it. Because now it's, it's possible that I was, he's almost elevated himself above the NFL, Mm -hmm. right? You know, so it's like, does he, how much does he love the game? Does he want to come back in? Like, does he love it that much? Because now he's almost become iconic, you Mm -hmm. know, to some, right? Mm -hmm. So by doing that, by putting the pad back on and going to play again, what do you, as Prince said, you know, what do you open yourself Mm -hmm. up for? Or now do people see you in this other light to where it's like, if you're over, let's say, playing the game or he's already dealt with that piece of like, I'm good on the game, then he's a ho- he's seen in a completely different light, which yeah. could could be worth more. What are you gonna say? I'm sorry, Joe. 
No, I was a, I was agreeing with both of you guys. That you know, that's a that's a key, you know, key that, you know, I never really thought about Prince where, you know, when you said that if he if he came back, he would kinda open himself up for that ostracization, you know, um ostracization. Yeah. And yeah. um it's not even worth, you know, it's not even worth at this point he hasn't played in four years and he's continuing to um push for our, you know, our communities and our people uh, in a positive way. And that would take away from that, and so um, definitely, it would, yeah, it would almost devalue him yeah, and, and yeah. what he's doing. And then, yeah. not to mention, it's 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 like having that one girlfriend. <laughs> keep going back, keep like. going back, and you know that she she she, she uh, crazy, abusive, being crazy, right? exactly. So why go back? Because right. the, the, and the reason why I say that is because when he had his 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 second workout or his workout for the NFL, you know, for the team, mm -hmm. they, they, they pretty much kind of did the same thing to him. Yeah. And, and he was speaking out like, this is what they're doing. And I'm like, don't go back. <laughs> Just right, don't right, go right, back. right. It's, it's, it's a talk. At that point, I, I felt the same way. I was like, man, yeah. at this point, don't even like, you know, because it's just not a, you know, it's like, the, like you said, that relationship is already severed. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, you know, it's not even going to be right. Right. And, yeah. and you've been out of it for four years and now you're trying to get back into yeah. it. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> no, yeah. man. No, those hits uh, hit different. Man, <laughs> hey, man, when you take that first hit, you're like, ooh, why did I do this? And then you say to yourself, I'm not going to give up. But after a while, you're going to get beat up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah at, the, at, a, at a quarterback position, that's, uh, that's yeah. tough, man. And That's they don't tough. protect all quarterbacks the same either. You know, we, we <laughs> right, also, right. Again, it, there's all these other moving parts. And there's one piece of me, the conspiracy theorist in me goes that, you know, maybe there's a team that gets another like, hey, man, we please take him? Because if he's on the field, he can't be in he can't be in the communities, right? right. So it's like, you know, if he's playing, he can't be inspiring people. Let's get his right. boy football. Right. Yeah, so it's uh, really interesting. So I wonder what will yeah. happen. But I think we're on par, though. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yo, this is a great game. We have to do this again. I feel like right. this yeah. this piece. <laughs> we ain't, yeah, we ain't even get to the, you know, we ain't even get to, you know, everything else. <laughs> uh, right, yeah, right, now right. We right. Now we definitely. definitely have a part two of that. So can you, Joe, you think you come back with us at some point? Yeah, absolutely. Game, right? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So, cool, 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 man, man, thank you so very much for yes, sir. everyone tuning in. Thank you so very much for being here for Game Beyond the Game, where we teach you and show you through the eyes of elite athletes and performers in life uh, how to navigate your game beyond the game. So obviously it's been Prince Daniels, myself, and this and today, Joe Gamble, helping us do that. So thank you all very much, and we hope to see you next time. Have a good one, y'all. Peace. Peace. <laughs>